Welcome to my talk. So this is joint work with my PhD supervisor, um, Kurt Hornig and Laura Warner. So I will start with a brief introduction and give a motivation um, which lies in the credit risk, credit risk applications. Then I will talk a little bit about the model class, the implementation, and then I will illustrate the framework by means of a credit, credit risk application. So um, the analysis of ordinal outcomes is an important task in various fields of, of research. For example, ordinal measurements often occur in preference modeling where scales from, say, poor to um, good are used, or in psychology, marketing, for example, customer satisfaction service, in finance where the credit risk assessments of sovereigns of firms is done by credit ratings on an ordinal scale, then in medical science one often um, observes pain severities or cancer stages and these ordinal responses, these are often correlated among either multiple um, measurements, for example, multi-rate agreement studies where several raters rate, for example, bottles of wine or whatever, or repeated measurements, for example, in medical sciences where um, the uh, pain severities of patients are recorded over time. So there is definitely a need for a multivariate ordinal model, so our goal was to make multivariate ordinal models available for the R community by an R package. So the original motivation, as mentioned, and previously lies in the credit risk application. So what is credit risk? Credit risk is the risk of a loss arising from a failure or default of a counterparty to meet its contractual obligations. And the most common measures of credit risk are credit ratings and probabilities of defaults. So there are two main modeling approaches, so credit rating models where um, one tries to obtain insights into um, the rating behavior of the credit um, rating agencies and Hilsch and Wilson, for example, they claim that um, credit ratings are relatively inaccurate um, measures of raw default probabilities. And then they can be outperformed in, in terms of default prediction by a simple um, uh, logit model based on uh, accounting ratios but there the problem is that one only observes a few um, default observations. So our approach, we try to combine these two modeling approaches and treat the binary default indicator as an ordinal variable with just um, two um, categories. So we have to deal with um, correlated ordinal data, so for each point in time we observe several um, credit ratings. So in a typical setting one obser we observe um, uh, ratings from the big three credit rating agencies, then the Poor's, Moody's and Fitch. And then for each rater there is a serial dependence over time. <coughs> so we need a very flexible model class that can handle ordinal and binary um, data and we need to account for heterogeneity in the rating methodology because the rating agencies that use different rating scales, for example Moody's uses a different rating scale compared to Standard and Poor's and Fitch, then there is heterogeneity in the covariates. Um, Moody's claims that they um, also account for the recovery rates at default in addition to the probability at default and so there might be different covariates uh, are used for the, for the rating agencies and then we need to deal with an unbalanced panel of firms as not all rating agencies or as not all firms are rated by all the rating agencies. So and one model class um, the, which can handle this um, flexible framework is the class of multivariate ordinary regression model. So if we denote by I um, our subject index, this corresponds to the firm in our setting. J is the rate, and this is out of a subset of Ji. So if we, if we, for example, if we just observe a rating from Standard Poor's and Fitch, then this subset Ji is just the set of these two 
and rating agencies. And Q and respectively QI are this, the cardinality of the set, then YIJ is an ordinal response, and RIJ is the category out of KJ categories, so the number of categories is allowed to vary as well. And then we have a connection between our observed ordinal outcome YIJ and an unobservable latent process, so we observe um, rating category RIJ even only if the latent process lies between the two corresponding thresholds. And the threshold parameters, they are allowed to vary among the raters as well. And for the um, latent process, we assume the following linear model. So we have an intercept, the covariates, some speed to chase, so the regression coefficients are allowed to vary among the raters as well. And then for the errors, we uh, assume to have a, a multivariate distribution with mean zero and some variance, covariance matrix. And we are able in our packages able to um, account for different error structures on this, on this variance, covariance matrix here. So, and we, we use pairwise likelihood estimation um, for estimating the model parameters. Then, because in ordinal models, absolute scale and absolute location are not identifiable, so we support um, several identifiability constraints. Um, in addition to a multivariate probit link, a multivariate logit link is implemented. Then, as mentioned before, you know, for the correlation between the variables, we support different error structures. We support the uh, general correlation and covariance structure, we support an equicorrelation structure and an A1 correlation structure. And in addition, we support constraints on the threshold as well as on the regression coefficients and category specific coefficients are supported as well. So now I will quickly um, introduce our data, so we have long-term issue credit ratings from Standard & Poor's, Moody's and & Fitch for U.S. companies. Then we have a failure indicator and the covariates, we have financial and, and market variables and the time frame we consider or the time period is 1999 till 2013. So if we start with the first simple example, where we have on the left-hand side, we, we have a formal law object, and on the left-hand side, we have a multiple measurement object. In this case, we have the multiple measurement object too because the data has a wide data format, so each rating is in one column of the data frame, so um, it's the SPR for Standard Poor's and Fitch for Fitch ratings, and on the, on the right-hand side of the formula, we have the covariates. And in this simple model, we want to um, set the thresholds um, equal for both Standard & Poor's and Fitch, and this is simply performed by a vector of C11 here. And then we call our fitting function MVOR, so we need a formula and the data set here, data ordinal, as threshold constraints, we set them equal. As a link, we choose the multivariate logit link, and as an error structure, we choose the general correlation structure. And in such a setting, we can analyze or have a look at the standardized regression coefficients here. And we see, for example, that high return retained earnings over assets, high return on capital or larger sized companies tend to obtain on average better ratings. And for example, um, firms with high debt ratios or high idiosyncratic or um, or systematic rings tend to obtain on average lower ratings. And we see there are some small differences between Standard & Poor's and Fitch, the coefficients, for example, for our size or for market to book. And we included a year intercept here, so because we have used the multivariate logit link, we can interpret the coefficient as um, marginal odds ratio, so here we have plotted the odds ratios, and an odds ratio of lower than one indicates a tightening of the rating standard, so we see that the standards tightened 
um, from the year 2000 on till 2007, and during the crisis there was a loosening of the standards, and then the standards returned um, back to the standards before the crisis in 2010. Uh, another model, so a joint model of credit rating, so here we added in addition to Standard and Poor's and Fitch Moody's ratings as well. On the right hand side of the formula everything stays the same and now we want to set the regression coefficients to be equal. This is just performed here with, again with a vector of ones and then we again fit the model and then we can have a look for example at the threshold coefficients and we see that Moody seems to be a little bit more conservative in the speculative grade um, area, while um, for the um, investment grade areas they are quite similar to the thresholds, and Fitch seems to be a little bit more optimistic around the investment grade, speculative grade air, um, boundary. And now we can add, in addition to the credit ratings, we can add the binary default or failure indicator. So here we add the failure indicator and now we have um, um, more covariates here. This is because in the literature different um, variables are used for credit rating models and failure prediction models. And then we have a more sophisticated way um, for the constraints in order to exclude coefficients or set them equal or whatever. So here we have for each um, variable here we have one column in the COF constraint matrix. So for this variable R20 we have here C1, 2, 3 and A and A excludes. So this variable R20 is just um, estimated for St. Poor's, Moody's and Fitch here. And for the failure indicator, it is excluded. If we have a look at sigma, it's here 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's used for all four dimensions. Mm -hmm. And for example, the last one, R35A, is excluded for the rating agencies and included for the failure indicator. And then again, we can fit the model with the fitting function M reward. Then we can analyze the correlations. We see, we observe that the correlations um, between the credit rating agencies are rather high. And if we have a look at the correlations um, between the rating agencies and the failure indicator, we see for Standard & Poor's and Moody's, they are quite low because we observe for, for these two um, 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 raters we observe I think even an, an A default and for Fitch we have lots of missings in the data set so we only observe in, in this subsample um, I think B and triple C default so the correlation here is higher in this case. And given that we know the joint distribution we can um, draw insights uh, or gain insights from this Distribution. So, for example, we can calculate um, conditional PDs, so conditioned on the observed ratings, and then we can plot the cap curve here and we um, obtain an accuracy ratio from 0 0.9 for an uh, out of sample pre um, prediction. I think we trained on 80% of the data and on 20% the, uh, the test data. And then we can fit a longitudinal model for one rating agency as well. So here we have just Sandler and Poor's rating, ratings and we have a different data format. So now we have a long data format. So we have the ratings in one column is here um, SPR. And then we have a, a, a subject index. This is the, the firm in this case. And a repeated measurement index is the year. Then again, we have on the right hand side everything um, the same like um, before. And again, we, we use um, threshold constraints. So f the thresholds are the same for all um, the years. And now we use the profit link. And as an error structure, we take the um, AR1 error structure. Then we can analyze the time varying coefficient. For example, we see that for long-term debt of long-term capital, there seems to be a change in, in the crisis because it's 
it's harder to get access to long-term debt during the crisis, or if we have a look at the retained earnings over assets, we see that there seems to be a, po a dividend policy change during the crisis. Here are the other variables. Then, so let me conclude. So the package MVORT um, is a flexible modeling framework for multivariate ordinal regression models. We support outcome-specific threshold as well as regression coefficient constraints on the threshold and the regression coefficients can be performed. We support different error structures. Um, we support two different link functions and if the user desires different link function, um, she can implement um, additional um, link functions so it's possible. The package is available on CRAN, uh, comprehensive package we need, and code snippets are available as well. Here are some references and thank you for your attention. You mean the ordinal responses, so if they're integer valued or... What do you, how do they, like for example, the credit rating, how is it treated as a background? Um, as an ordered factor, so... But you can, imp you can, in the, you can, as an input, you can have integers, you can have uh, characters or ordered factors or a factor, so it does it automatically. So if so I label If it's an ordered factor, then it takes the ordering from the factor. And if it's just an integer, then it takes 1 to 7 or whatever. Or if it's just a string, then it takes it, I think, alphabetically. So, yeah. Uh, any suggestions for creating a missing value in the quantized variable you want to have a value in the So we, we assume that. Um, so, so you mean if we have if you have missing values in in the in the in, as in the response if we if I have some suggestions so um, so far we assume that they are missing at random and yeah you, you can have um, it's possible yes but we assume that they are missing at, at random. Yeah, it works, so you can have missing values, but they are assumed to be missing at random. Did you actually check why any assumptions? Yes, it's like in cumulative models in the universe case, you have the proportional odds or parallel lines assumption, yes. But you can relax it by using partial proportional odds, it's supported as well.